about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be, life with no distractions We'll get away, this is what we waited for Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the th uh, is this the fifth the fifth in our online live sessions for A level sociology. I'm Jim at TCU HQ and uh, yeah, who do we think of when we when we think of crime and deviance? Is it Becker, Durkheim maybe Merton, Cohen? No, there are two names that come to mind when I hear the words crime and deviance. It's Duncan and Craig. So let's go over and meet them. Here they are. Craig in the middle. Hello. Duncan on the right. I mean, in terms Hello. of your expertise, not necessarily your 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 expertise in crime. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. How are you doing, guys? <laughs> Very well, thank okay. you. Yeah, you're right, Jim. Yeah, I'm good. I'm looking forward to this. I'm just here to, uh, to 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 keep fair play, to keep an eye on the chat window, and to to do the all important PowerPoint clicking. But but. Duncan, do you want to give us a, a quick overview as to what the focus of this session is? I'm conscious that crime and deviance is a big topic. So what are we what are we looking at over the next 30 minutes or so? It is. So our focus is going to be very much on the theories of crime and deviance uh, today, with a little bit on the, some of the trickier topics towards the end as well, but mostly on the theory. Um, and we've got a range of um, activities, not all multiple choice questions, but some bits and bobs of all sorts uh, today. And... For those of you who haven't joined us before, although I recognise a lot of names in the chat window already, um, to engage with it, if you can type into the chat window any answers for questions and any questions that you've got for us as well, if you want to. We won't see them all, I'm sure, but we'll we'll try and keep an eye on the chat window and respond. Um, so I think we've got Craig first up with something called 54321 about functionalism. So I'll hand over to Craig at this that point. That's right. Thank you, Duncan. Yeah. Oh, crime is one. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. So, uh, what are we going to start today? <laughs> Sorry, I've just started late here. Um, <laughs> so today we're going to start. 
Everyone's laughing now. Uh, so today we're going to start with our five, four, three, two, one. Uh, if you've been joining us in previous weeks, what we do is we ask you to name five of something, four of something, three of something, two of something, one of something. You have two minutes to do that. This is all based on functionalist and subcultural theories of crime, this activity. Um, so if we could have the next slide, please. So you have two minutes to name five adaptations of strain, four functions of crime, uh, three types of subculture, two subcultural theorists, and one <laughs> criticism of Durkheim's view of crime and deviance. And yes, I, yeah, I so am wearing my best kind of prison fatigue. <laughs> <laughs> So if you could type some if, yeah, if, responses. Okay, oh, so we've got Daisy in. Functions of Crime, Boundary Maintenance Safety Valve, yep. Two good ones there. And uh, Sociology and Funky Beats, okay, yep. <laughs> that wasn't an answer. Um, cultural <laughs> strain, strain. So for strain theories, innovation, ritualism, retreatism, conformity, there is one more. Subcultural theorists, Cohen and Chloe Nolan, good. I don't know why Barry's got to buckle up, but uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, innovation, conformity, ritualism, retreatism, rebellion. Okay, good. That's that's five innovations. Uh, four functions of crime. Okay, I can see three subcultural theories: criminal, retreatist, conflict, retreat. Re re blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> okay, criticism: rose tinted glasses, uh, ritualism. Okay, yeah. we, we're at the same one. Um, Clown to Nolan, okay. Uh, rebellion, anti-school subcultures, Owen. Innovation of crime, conformity, okay. Functional for whom? Who is it functional for? Good, good um, uh, criticism there. Um, broken windows theories and doesn't quite fit in with functional and subcultural, All right? Maintain law and order, okay. That's a good function. Okay, retreatism, Two. rebellion, reasserting One. boundaries, reasserting value consensus, creating social cohesion. Mm. Okay, so there's some very, very good responses. We got quite, I think we pretty much covered, we certainly got all five of the adaptations to strain. If we could just have a look at those, please. If Jim's there, there he is. Oh, yeah, there he is. Um, yep, yeah, it's conformity. That is when we accept. Um, the the uh, when we accept society's goal of the American dream and we conform and um, we use legitimate means in order to achieve it. Innovation where we accept the dream. Uh, oh, sorry, we accept the goal and however we use illegitimate means. Ritualism where we've rejected the dream. We kind of know we're not going to achieve it, but we still end up conforming to legitimate means anyway. Retreatism where we reject both the dream and the legitimate means of uh, achieving it and rebellion when you stop doing everything decide to become a tutor to you presenter uh, for a sociology <laughs> thing no no it's not but that's more like ritualism i think but um <clears throat> yeah rebellion is where you have a different dream and you use any means uh, possible to get that okay so uh, can we look at the four functions of crime please yep so four of the functions lots of people put in there so we've got releases pressure as well sort of like safety valve or what's called tension management uh, we've got boundary maintenance we've got adaptation and change we've got the safety valve we've got ideological function and um, you can also sort of like see as a warning sign as well uh cheater to you craig is about to get sacked oh okay oh uh, well never mind uh, it's not the most unique way i've had a p45 by the way um okay so uh three three different types of subcultures Criminal conflict and retreatist, they are Chloe de Nolan's three um, forms of subcultures. Criminal subcultures, obviously, where there is a long established um, network of criminal activity within an area. Conflict subcultures, usually in areas where there's high transition or there is no established criminal um, network. And therefore, the con uh, sorry, therefore, members of the subcultures gain status from conflicting with other gangs and retreated subcultures are those that have kind of dropped out of society let's go to uh question number two please cohen i was going to say retreated subcultures is like to you presenters again but you know never mind. um three cohen and chloe de nolan we've done that and lots of people got that one and one criticism 
One criticism of Durkheim is he never mentions how much crime is optimal for society. He does talk about crime being a positive function, but he never talks about sort of like how much is too much or how, how much is not enough. Too much crime and obviously sort of like society goes turns to chaos, not enough crime, and it stagnates and does not move forward. Okay, so let's move on to our next activity, which I believe is with Duncan. Yeah, okay, and thanks very much, Craig. Some some great responses there really good and i think a couple of people went down a sort of different tack with the types of subculture but not they weren't wrong answers it was just not quite what what uh going for we came for that kind of claude and Allen type uh, and um stuff and people were kind of going like for example anti-school school subcultures and things like that but they were you know not wrong it's just a different different kind of take on the question um these next questions are about marxism and marxist theories of crime and deviance and the bubble quiz, the, the trick with the bubble quiz is that it's not you're not looking for one right answer. You might be, but it's possible that all the answers could be right. It's possible that none of them could be or anywhere in between that. So we're going to have a look now at these questions and you've got to decide which of these are right, um, if not all of them. And there might be some terms here which we need to kind of uh, drill down as well. So if you've got any questions do stick them in the chat window if you're not sure about any of the key terms. So question one, which of these are ways in which capitalism is criminogenic, according to Marxists? So just in case we're not um, not familiar with that term, it means that capitalism causes crime. OK, so some options here. Promote selfish values that fuel some crime. Encourages corporate and state crime in the pursuit of profit. Provokes proletarian fight back, sometimes including illegal action. Causes poverty, which makes material crime inevitable. I've seen a few people saying all four. A couple of people saying less of them, and you need to know which ones. Which ones then? Oh yeah, some of them. Some people have specified a few, but most are going with all. Shall we have a look? Yeah, I went with all as well. Yeah, all of those could be ways in which capitalism might be criminogenic. Okay, let's well have done. a look at the next question, but very good. Well done with that. Which of these are criticisms of some Marxist views of crime? So you need to have a read of this and think, which of these are criticisms? Are they all criticisms? None of them, some of them. So health and safety laws primarily benefit employers rather than employees. Um, there are lots of laws that protect workers and potentially criminalise bad employers. There were high crime rates in non-capitalist societies, for example, the Soviet Union. And there is a consensus about most criminal law, laws against murder, burglary, etc., are uncontroversial. So when people talk about it just being bourgeois law, whatever, you know, is that really true? Or does everyone think that burglary should be illegal, etc.? Okay, we're seeing B C D, B C D, A and D, B D, A C. Quite a few, um, quite a variation, although B C D seems to be popular. Those of you who are going with A just want to might want to just think about who are the employers and who are the employees and whether that's a criticism of Marxism or whether it might be agreeing with Marxism. So shall we have a look? I think most of you got it. It is B, C and D. Um, some Marxist theorists like Pierce argue essentially what's in there in A, that a lot of laws that appear to be supporting the working class or supporting the workers actually uh, and it's still in the interest of the ruling class either because it prevents revolution or it gives people a, a healthy workforce and so they, they they're more productive and things like that okay so <laughs> louise if we're smashing this to be fair yeah you're doing very well lots of you doing really well it's fantastic should we have a look at the next one which of these concepts were important in hall's study that's stuart hall policing the crisis if you don't know it from the title the stuart hall's policing the crisis was his research into black muggers in the 1970s okay so have a look what do you think which of these were important in that study moral panic lots of people going with moral panic okay a fantasy crime wave crisis of capitalism and one with a swear at the end okay um i've seen people saying a seen people saying a and c c um okay a and c b we've got had most things coming on um and the question i suppose is <laughs> and we've got d now as well so i think between you you've said all of them 
Now, shall we have a look? Yeah, between you, you got it. <laughs> um, it was all of them um, because Stuart Hall thought because there was a crisis of capitalism in the 1970s, big recession, um, that a lot of uh, people from kind of migrant communities or uh, minority ethnic communities had previously been conducting what he termed white man's shit work. Um, so kind mm, of, uh, okay. I'm sorry. Do apologize. <laughs> we'll I'll get got by the uh, YouTube censors for that. Um, but um, but then when the crisis came, they were <laughs> they uh, they um, were like the first to go into unemployment and be more likely to be unemployed, um, and that led to some people being on the bounds of criminality and sort of hustling in street potential street crime. Um, there was a moral panic about the the black mugger, black muggers. Um, and because of the reaction to that moral panic, uh, crackdown on it, that led to kind of a fantasy crime wave, the idea that there was a huge increase in uh, black street crime, which uh, wasn't necessarily true. So uh, lots of really good responses there. Well done. I've got to say D again, Duncan. Is this just so you can use your, just so you can use the horn? So D was, of course, white man's <laughs> Oh, that, that was too late on the horn. <laughs> okay, right. Um, <laughs> shall we? Uh, shall we have a look at the next question then? Okay. Right. So, which of these are criticisms of neo-Marxist approaches to crime, with a focus on neo-Marxist? So, they tend to see the working class as passive. Most victims of crime are working class. They are only interested in macro questions or um, the media sensationalizes crime in order to sell papers, not to prevent revolution. So if we think of kind of neo-Marxist approaches of crime, like Stuart Hall's study, which of these um, would be criticisms of them? So we've got A and B, some, someone suggested, A and C. A and B, A, B, C, you see. Do you think about neo-Marxism, what's the difference between neo-Marxism and traditional Marxism? And think about whether some of those might be more criticisms of traditional Marxism or sort of classical Marxism rather than neo-Marxism. Um, got lots and lots of responses coming through, some good ones. Shall we have a look? Someone said B and D, that's good. And B and D was right. So I saw its clucks. Don't know whether some others saw that. Um, a few other people going for D and B. So the tendency of the working class is passive. That tends to be a neo-Marxist criticism of classical Marxism, actually, that you know, that actually sometimes um working class people are, you know, make a conscious decision to commit crime or not, rather than being the kind of the passive victims of capitalism. Um but this idea that most of the victims of crime are working class is a criticism of both neo-Marxist and classical Marxist um, theories. Again, the only interest in macro questions, that's often posed as a criticism of classical Marxism, but neo-Marxists tend to be interested in both the macro and the micro. If you think about um, Hall, he did talk about um, responses to responses to uh, you know, the response to the crime as well as the social causes and things. And then very much in, in relation to um, Hall's study, he argued that, the you know, the part of the reason for this moral panic was to try and prevent revolution, to divide the working class. And actually, even even Hall himself, to be honest, um, conceded that actually part of the main reason why you had that sort of sensationalization of the story in the newspapers was in order to sell newspapers, you know, people would... More likely to buy a newspaper with a with a sensational story in it, not really to prevent a, a, a Marxist revolution. Um, some nice questions in the in the chat window. Mm, question Is it okay Jasmine to at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think, I Greg? Um, I would I would be okay with that. I think. I mean, yeah. particularly, yeah. I mean, you specifically referen referencing Angela Davis, but um, yeah, yeah. the idea sort of like is that as long as that, as long as somebody's put forward as an idea that is but applicable to those contexts, then certainly you can do it because it demonstrates your wider learning. Um, mm -hmm. you can see, it can show you that sort of like you've got a, a broader interest in sociology than yeah. just quite simply what is on the spec. 
yeah absolutely there's a list um on the aqa website of the minimum if you like of studies that you should be aware of and mm. you shouldn't know about but absolutely there's no that is not um restrictive in any way i mean angela dave's great for sort of you know um uh you know kind of uh intersectional feminism and things like that and thinking about uh, ethnicity um but if you were you know there's also the issue of more contemporary studies and you definitely want to be able to bring stuff in that mm. that's have have happened since um aqa published the uh, specification all that kind of thing uh, uh, um and also you and also use contemporary sorry sorry go on no, no, you i was going to say um and also to use contemporary examples as part of your analysis as well that's, that's yeah. certainly part of something there because it shows that you understand how sociology works so i would certainly use that yeah absolutely there was a question there about what what do we mean by kind of macro questions so if you think about macro and micro sociology macro is the sort of structure the big structure um so things like capitalism social class gender on a sort of macro scale value consensus across society a micro is more about individuals or small groups okay and the and perhaps their interactions and things like that okay shall we on to the next one which of the following sociologists of crime and deviance are considered to be marxist so have a look at those four names which of those if any are considered to be marxist It's really nice to see people answering the questions in the chat window as well. And some people, yeah. I, I was I was just about to say that, Duncan. I think it, it's really nice to see you all cooperating and collaborating. Mm. It, it, you get that with sociology, don't you? You know, people want to help each other out. It's it's lovely. Yeah, I've got someone saying none. A, <laughs> a few people saying none of them. Um, so a couple of suggestions being there. It. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you out of your misery a little bit with that one shall we have a look those of you who are saying none of them are right yeah absolutely merton's a functionalist south um we know him from his work on green crime not everyone fits beautifully into a <laughs> in, in, into a perspective instantly everyone we kind of want them to don't we but they don't necessarily um becker is an interactionist hide and zone a feminist um a couple of people saying they hadn't heard of hide and zone she might come up again later so have a quick, have a quick read before, before we get there okay so that's the last of my marxism questions i'm gonna hand back over to craig now for a 60 second challenge about interactionism okay thank you yeah i'm still here um yeah uh, we're gonna do a 60 second challenge now uh, what we have is we have five um sociologists on the left hand side of the screen and we have five key concepts that they are associated with obviously they've been muddled up uh, when we start the clock you'll have 60 seconds to match them up if on the right hand side if in the chat window if you just want to put say for example a4 um, and so on and so forth okay so if we could start the clock please jim thank you Heidenson does do control theory, you're right, Abigail. Hmm. And South East Green Crimes, yep. So we have D1 from SY, Lamert, Primary and Secondary Deviants. B2, Young, Folk of the Moral Panic. Mm. Mm. Jess has got E5, Becker, Social Construction of Deviants. That wasn't a yes or no, that was a, just a mmm. <laughs> How a few people have gone C2, haven't they? Mm. C C2 and C3, yeah. Mm. Ellie War, uh, oh, sorry, Ellie A4 uh, has got Cicerel and Negotiation of Justice. Good. Uh, Lucy's got Lamert and Primary and Secondary and Deviants. Um, Shannon's gone one E, so Becker and Primary and Secondary Deviants. Okay, so there's lots of lots of lots of responses there. Um, some uh, Sophie's just put down all four A, four B, uh, B, C, two D. Okay, um, <laughs> just trying to read them. My glasses are getting a bit. <laughs> the answers are uh, Cicerell, He did talk about the negotiation of justice. Uh, obviously, you might see that sort of like all of these fit under the kind of broad umbrella of interactionism. Although Cicerell, some people will see him as a phenomenologist. Uh, Cicerell, negotiation <laughs> of justice. Uh, Young and deviancy amplification. Jock Young's study with marijuana users, users in uh, Notting Hill, deviancy amplification. Cohen, folk devils and moral panics. 
Lemert, primary and secondary deviants, and Becker talked about the social construction of deviants. And yes, these are sociology, uh, these sociology revision blasts are live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Certainly with Duncan. Don't know if I'll be here next week. <laughs> but, um, okay. I'm sure Let's you will. To next um, one. I was just going to quickly Sorry, say, because it's interesting, because some, some people where you might feel you've put a wrong answer, it's not necessarily wrong, because obviously a lot of these did did kind of um, oh, talk about each other's, you know, were drew, drew on each other's work. So so Cohen, for instance, did talk about deviancy amplification when, <laughs> you know, in relation to his folk devils and moral panic. So it's not a, where you might feel you've got a wrong answer, it's not necessarily a wrong answer, it's just who who kind of came up with the concept or who's who do we most associate it with. Okay. Just a question there from Dizzle Dazzle. So like, yes, Cicero did talk about typifications as well. Mm -hmm. And I've just, I've just been informed I'm on a long-term contract. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Good news today. We, okay. We, Our next activity is, is me as well. Um, uh, we, I assume it's me, is it, Don? Yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah. It is me. I thought so. Um, <laughs> right. This is an activity called categorize. Uh, what, will, uh, what you need to do here is that there are eight terms on the right-hand side. And what I want you to do is I want you to organize those terms into either left realists, located on the left-hand side of the screen, and right realists, which are kind of in the center of the screen, but they are to the right. Okay, so left realism. Um, when the clock starts going off 60 seconds, you need to place these key terms into whether they are left realism or right realism. Uh, what it might be worth doing in the chat box is just put an L and then put the numbers next to them and then put R and then put the numbers that you think in there as well. Okay, there you go. See, just type left the numbers, etc. Okay, so Muskan's put got left as marginalization. Don't worry, Luis, it's you good. can watch it back and get better. Here is right realist, there's number one, biological differences. Maddie's put oh, Maddie. quite a few there. Yeah. One right realism, two right realism, three left realism, four right realism, five left realism. It's now just scrolled out my screen. I wasn't quick enough. <laughs> right, Dizzle Dazzle, left subcultures marginalization relative to... Oh, and that one's gone as well. Lots of people are answering very quickly. Loads are coming okay. through. Really good engagement. Really good responses. Um, left is three subcultures. It does sound like bidding. Yeah, it's like I'm doing an auction. <laughs> or horse racing, one or the other. Um, left six, one and five. Uh, left two, three, five, six, seven. Okay, so there's lots and lots of responses there. Some very good answers. Uh, let's look at the correct responses. Of course, left realism and all these ideas are kind of taken from um, Lee and Young and the idea of relative deprivation, marginalization and subcultures. Um, and they, they were sort of like the causes of crime according to left realists. Right realists, quite a broad range of them, most of them associated with James Q. Wilson, but inadequate socialization comes from Charles Murray. Uh, biological differences is, uh, and this is another one I can't pronounce, Hernstein and Wilson, um, broken windows theory, Wilson and Kellings, rational choice theory. You've also got Wilson, you've got Clark, who said to talk about rational choice theory as well. And situational crime prevention is the ways in which right realism tackle um, sort of like some of these issues in terms of crime. There's some really good responses there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some, ex some people are putting uh, um, other bits in. How long ago did this start? It started at 3 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so round of applause but for you lot be, in the chat window there it's not not it, for it starting it at 3 p.m yeah it will be available on catch up pretty much straight away mm -hmm. um so you can watch it you can watch it back you've not missed anything now we're going to move on to duncan with um an activity called the cube which i'm really interested yeah. to see here Okay, so this is where I hope you're not doing this on a smartwatch because you might struggle to read um, the text on this one. But you're going to, in a second, see a puzzle cube. It's like a Rubik's cube. Um, so it's all been like muddled up. Um, but there are, because you'll just see three faces of the cube. And essentially, there are a number of terms and phrases there that should be in three groups, three faces on the cube. And what I want you to do is work out what the three groups are are what the three categories are and then which nine terms come under each one so you'll have three minutes don't worry you will see it a bit better than that the cube comes in the middle and sort of tilts a bit so you'll be able to see 
the words more clearly than you can at the moment. So you've got three minutes. I will give you a few hints as we go, but here we go. We're starting. So have a look at the terms and see if you can work out what the three categories might be. OK, so have a look. What could the three categories be? <laughs> Daisy's comparing you to Philip Schofield, Duncan. Yeah, absolutely. I've got Gordon the Gopher here in the in the uh, Sociology <laughs> Live Lounge. Stop calling me Gordon the Gopher. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean. uh, Lauren suggested that one of the one of the categories could be Marxism. It could well be. Mm -hmm. So you might want to think, um, you know, which which the nine things could be that would link with Marxism. And someone else suggested feminism could we could be one. Absolutely. So we've got Marxism and feminism. There's one other there's one other category. Um, it's not functionalism, um, dizzle dazzle. It could have been, but it's not. So we're looking for one other category. We've got Marxism, feminism. It's perhaps an area that we've not touched on so far today. Another theoretical area. Someone suggested conflict theories. Obviously, got the Marxism and the feminism. Um, mm. We're going to move mm. them all. So, when it's not that they're right at the moment, you will have to group what the nine, what the nine Marxism things are, what the nine uh, feminism mm. ones are, oh, and someone right. else put postmodernism. You are right, Sh Shira. So, if you can start grouping them, then so what are the Marxism slash neo Marxism nine? What are the feminism nine, and what are the postmodernism nine? OK, you've got a minute and a half left to try and um, pop these together. It's not interactionism. It is um, it is postmodernism. So we need a list of nine words or terms relating to Marxism, a list of nine words or terms relating to feminism, and a list of nine words or terms relating to postmodernism. So what goes into Marxism? Let's see. I did see somebody Any... earlier on put Carol Smart and linked it to personal life perspective, which I think was quite clever because that is Yeah, absolutely, because yeah. that's we where we family. encounter a, yeah. yeah. Oh, Althusa would be for Marxism. That's very good. So a few people are getting Althusa for Marxism. Yeah, with Carol Smart, we encounter a, in relation to Ooh, nice. personal life perspective. Oh, here we go. Abigail Taylor, feminism, gender deal, mailstream, Carl and Hyden's own control theory, doubly deviant, brilliant. Postmodernism, internalized surveillance and cats, very good. Marxism, criminogenic capitalism, crimes of the powerful revolution, really good. Shambliss for Marxism as well. Um, mm -hmm. Repressive state apparatus and revolution for Marxism, great. Gender deal, class deal, mailstream, doubly deviant for feminism. Oh, loads of really good ones coming through now. Mm -hmm. Postmodernists, Cats, Ling, Gender Deal, mm -hmm. Carla Adler, Hide and Zone, Class Deal, Control Theory, Mailstream. I think we're nearly there with feminism, aren't we? I think we're pretty close mm -hmm. to the full nine. Oh, some more postmodernism ones coming through there. Edge work. Well done, Emma. Yeah, um, edge work, xenology, internalized right. surveillance. Some good, really good terms here. If any of these, we won't have time to go through them all today if there are any that you're not sure about, but you can look them up and it's these are all useful terms to be able to deploy in an essay neo tribes yeah, right. mafasoli really um yeah. and edge work for postmodernism adley you might want to maybe consider putting it somewhere else it's, it's yeah, adley, yeah. Okay. okay yeah we're out of time we're out of time loads of excellent answers there um shall we have a look at the three groups so the the completed successfully um unscrambled cube there we go so there you go i think you got them pretty much but you can have a quick look there so up at the top we've got postmodernism and crime cats ling neo tribes globalization of crime internalized surveillance zemiology edge work cultural criminology mafasoli we've got feminism crime francis hyden zone control theory Fried Radler, carol smart talked about mailstream mailstream criminology doubly deviant pat carlin who talked about the class deal and the gender deal then for Marxism and neo-Marxism, we've got Stuart Hall, we've got criminogenic capitalism, Frank Pierce, William Shambliss, crimes of the powerful, resistance, revolution, Althusa, and repressive state apparatus. So some really good answers there, I think, because it was quite a tricky activity, but I think you did really well with it. And um, we've got one last task to do. We are running a little over time today, but um, what we've got here are confusing pairs. So basically we've got two terms and we've got a definition next to them, but they, it's possible the definitions are in the wrong place so you've just got to say um right or wrong yes or no basically so type in is that are they the right definitions for those terms 
yes or no so secondary green crime and primary green crime and the definitions we've got there are um crimes committed against the environment e.g pollution or other crimes linked to breaches of environmental laws e.g organized crime violence got they don't match they're mixed um wrong 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 no 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 wrong 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 other way around let's have a look well done very good Yay. Well done for spotting that okay really good and a couple of people said they're just about to do this and that you know well this is a good good starting point but we're, we're moving on from green crime now next one okay crime it's prevention nice. what was that sorry craig i was going to say it's nice people are giving the explanations as well showing sort of like yeah, some really yeah, excellent and, knowledge yeah re excellent knowledge yeah um so we've got environmental crime prevention methods of crime prevention such as target hardening and designing out e.g anti-vital vandal paint and anti-homeless spikes situational crime prevention intervention to prevent antisocial behavior and stop the deterioration of an area e.g curfews and no alcohol zones people are saying it's wrong no 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 shall we see you're right you were right it was wrong this is i'm just confusing myself now but yeah well done they were muddled up they were the wrong way around okay very good let's see the next one there's just a couple more of these okay so about um police and policing here and discretion what do we think structural discretion and cultural discretion are the definitions in the right order or are these the wrong way around let's see on switch them so what do we think? Please choose when to enforce the law based on the canteen culture, norms and values of the profession. Please choose when to enforce the law based on their role of protecting the bourgeoisie and controlling the proletariat. So the kind of Marxist view there. Saying switch, it's wrong, switch. Shall we have a look? Yep, yeah, well done. Are they all gonna be like that? Shall we have a look? <laughs> Let's see the next one. Okay. <laughs> Spiral of denial and techniques of neutralization. Okay, so this is a bit about state crime here. So, well, well, it might be one of them is. So spiral of denial, Cohen's idea of how states respond to charges of having committed state crime and techniques of neutralization, Matz's idea of how people seek to justify their criminal or deviant behavior. What do we think? Right, right, right. Seeing right from Jasmine, right from Sophia, right from Amelia. Um, loads more rights coming through, they're fine. Shall we have a look? absolutely well done and um, they're easily confused because they are quite similar aren't they but one's about individual mm -hmm. and the other's about a government and i think we've got one mm -hmm. more okay and we're back to where we started really with strain theory and uh, merton and his adaptations to strain um are these the right way around so we've got retreatist and uh rebel so retreat is one of merton's adaptations to strain they reject the means and the goals and are likely to commit crimes such as drug abuse and we've got one of Merton's adaptations to strain. They reject the means and the goals and are likely to commit crimes such as revolutionary acts. Okay, right, right, right. Correct. Yes, they're right. Right, yes, yes, yes. Shall we have a look? See the answer. It is indeed correct. Well done. And it, the, the sort of key point there is really they reject the means and the goals but wish to replace them with different goals to change society okay i really really impressed with everyone's um, answers there i know we've gone on a little bit longer than we normally do but it's i'm glad to see that everyone's kept engaging right to the end um there were a couple of questions in there about whether we're going to do this once we go once you've gone back to school and we absolutely intend to um if you want to post in the chat window whether this time still might work for you or whether we need to look at a different time that we can have a read of that and see what you come up with but we're back next week anyway at the same time same place um even, even craig is his contract is okay for next week is he uh... <laughs> yeah yeah. And yeah. Um, what are we on next week <laughs> uh next week i believe it's um theory of methods year two isn't it i think it is i think we're looking at some of the more complex theory yeah. and method stuff yeah. so some of the sociology and the science and things if you haven't done it yet it still might be worth coming in and having a having a go and see how you do because it's a good good mm. you know uh challenging introduction to it if you haven't got there yet but um, I like, hopefully a lot of you will will have done I like okay we'll have a read the... okay Sorry. somebody mentioned earlier on that um uh, me and you are the new ant and deck well well kind of my initials are cj so i could it could be cj and duncan instead of ant and deck absolutely yeah um yes and we could get CJ ready to run Okay, we'll get ready to rumble this time next music. week. <laughs> uh, so Don't thanks forget, to Jim, uh, thanks to Craig. 
Yeah, just a quick Thanks, reminder, Duncan, yeah, right. before everyone signs off, that uh, Craig in particular is on a, a, a thumbs up bonus. That if we can get to 200 thumbs up, he gets a, 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 a as, a, as yet undisclosed bonus. <laughs> uh, so if you want Craig to come back next week, give this session a thumbs up. More importantly, if you do want to get alerted to all the upcoming um, live sessions, we're doing these for other available subjects as well. So it may well be that some of your other subjects, like I know, psychology or business or whatever, are covered as well. So just uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, then you'll get an alert with all the details. But uh, fantastic session. Thanks very much, Duncan and Craig, Ant and Deck. Um, same time, same place next week. Okay, Thank you very cheers, much. guys. See Bye. ya. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.